Welcome to Dr. Piercy's video on JSP Guessing Game Example Design Models. In this video, we will develop a logical model for the JSP version of our guessing game example, and we'll discuss the components that we will create based on this model. Here's a workflow style model about how the game is played. As you can see, we have two what we might call swim lanes, where I have labeled as the server side and the client side. On the server side are parts of the process that will be done by the game master, the thing that is controlling the game, coming up with the random target and determining whether a particular guess is true or false. On the client side, basically, we are going to be displaying a form either with a message telling them how to guess or with a message that shows the outcome of their correct guess with the number of guesses. You can see it starts with initializing the game and setting the random target on the server side. This will then put a form or some such on the client side where we'll have to get their guess. The guess will then go back to the server where they will compare the guess with the target. Three possible outcomes. If guess is too low, we will display the form again to the user but with a message along with it that tells them to guess higher. On the other hand, if it is too high, we'll display this similar form but with a message that says to guess lower. And finally, if they guess what the target is, we'll display that they got it correct with the number of guesses. So this is kind of a formal look at how the game is played. Now let's see how we can translate this into the components that we might want to create. First, let's think about what the user is going to see. Here I've added to the diagram some very simple wireframes. A wireframe is basically a design model for a web page or another type of user interface. We're going to keep this very simple so we just have basically three elements at most on our different views. Some type of welcome message, instructions for the particular guess. You notice how those change either from the first guess to whether they should guess higher or lower. And then an input form. You can see the first two wireframes look very similar. The final wireframe is not too much different, but instead of an input form, we'll probably have a leak or a button that says to play again. Now we have some idea what it's going to look like when the user sees the game. This will help us when it goes to create the HTML or CSS that we want to do to display the view. But what components will be part of our program that we're going to write, especially for the server side? Well, for this first example, we are working on simply understanding JSPs. And we're going to be using the JSP file to act as both the controller of the program and managing the view. So what happens on the server side will need to be conducted as Java inside the JSP. And then we will include HTML and CSS in the same JSP file to handle the client side. Recall that our ultimate goal is to go to an MVC design pattern where we have servlets and JSPs and possibly Java classes as part of our model. But for now, we're focusing on JSP, so it will act as both controller and view. I think the best way to do this is to have one JSP file that will basically be the introductory page. It will be handling initializing the game and setting the random target and then showing the initial form. The next set of tasks is basically some of the decision making. Deciding what the outcome of the guess is will be the Java portion of the JSP. And then displaying the appropriate form or message will be the HTML and CSS portion of the JSP. So you see here we will include two JSP files in our Eclipse project for the JSP focused example index.jsp and we'll call the second one game.jsp. Now in addition it would be nice to have a Java class. So primarily for example purposes only to show you how you can connect JSPs to Java classes in the model we're going to make a class called game number. You can think of game number as a kind of a super number. Something that not only holds a value but also has some behavior and behavior that we can add to should we want to use this class for other types of games. If you recall the numbers that are in our guessing game, we have a min and a max for the range, we have the target value, 
The target value will have some special behavior, so we might want to add a method for set random. We also have the guess itself, and we have the number of guesses. The number of guesses will need to change by one each time, so we can add a method called increment. So here is what we call a UML class diagram of what I'm going to use to create our game number. The game number will have one field called value, and that will be an int. We'll have two constructors. One we can call if we just want it to have a blank game number, but another one we can call to set the game number. It may be useful in some circumstances. We'll have a setter and getter, mainly to keep it fairly standardized. And we will have a couple of custom methods. We'll have set random, which we can use to set it to some random integer in between a min and a max. So the two ints shown as arguments here will be the min and max of our target range. And we'll have an increment method. For whichever object we call the increment method on, it will add one to the value when this method is called. So quick review, we're going to create our first example for the game with three basic components. Index.jsp, which will work along with our game number class to initialize the game and set a random target, and then display the first form for the user to guess. The game.jsp, which will receive guesses anytime along the guessing stream, so to speak, and will evaluate the guess and then display the appropriate form. Both the JSPs will work with the game number class and create objects of this class as needed to conduct the game. In the next few videos, we'll create our Eclipse project and we'll create each of these components. For more information about the concepts discussed in this video, please visit the references shown here. This video was written, narrated, and produced by Dr. Craig A. Piercy. The background music is locally sourced by Jason Farnham from the YouTube Audio Collection. This has been a Piercy production.